Hi, right, kids, we're home. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. Hmm. What's this? System update, ready to install. Let's do it. So actually, over the weekend, Rivian was very gracious and brought a truck up here to Colorado just for me and a few others to go uh, out on a drive with it through the mountains to try out the new software over the air update. And this one is a really significant one. It affects a lot of the uh, driving modes and uh, towing and off-road stuff. So I'm gonna go through all that in a little bit. So first I'll show you the interface changes. We'll walk you through that. And then we're gonna go out, maybe hook up some trailers and see how it works and maybe even get a little dirty on some trails. So let's talk about the interface really quickly. We have um, basically the same interface uh, that we expect from before, except for this particular tab, which is are the drive modes. And in this particular case, the drive modes have been reimagined in two sections, on-road or off-road. They're kind of logically split between things like rock crawling in off-road and all-purpose in on-road. These selections here are familiar as well. They used to be across the bottom, but now they've been moved over here to where you can make changes like brake regen and stability and the ride feel and so on, which is something really cool about the Rivian that you can make these changes on the fly for, most, for the most part. However, here's where the magic really happens. If you swipe left here, you get a lot more information here um, that wasn't available before. It's really great. So in this particular drive mode, you have all purpose. We're on all purpose on road mode. And you have all of these different squares of information. You've got a compass and elevation. You've got the trip meters, which is awesome because they were kind of buried before. Battery temperature, motor temperature for each of the four motors here. And then you have the PSI for each of the tires. This device in the middle shows you the acceleration or regen. It's really cool. And of course, this up here shows you how the uh, steering is where the steering is set. If you go over here to off road, and we go to one of the off-road modes, like this all-terrain mode, you'll see basically this is the same information. However, there you have these two new squares here, the pitch and the roll, which are obvious. The pitch is you know how far up you're going, up and down, and the roll is how far you're tipping, which are really useful pieces of information, especially off-road. One little side note, with this uh, four motor view uh, um, here, this icon in the middle, it's kind of cool to see when you switch between a mode and conserve how when you go to conserve, as we know, it only uses the front two motors and you can see that in the visual feedback. It's pretty cool. All right, not a major rock crawling trail, but we are in some dirt here. And I just wanted to point out, we're switched over to the all-terrain off-road mode. And there's one difference here, these two squares here, you have the pitch and the roll. It's the only difference between the off-road modes and the on-road on -road modes with regards to this particular data square, or these data squares. I can see why, because the pitch and roll are kind of an important thing. You know, we're at a couple of degrees now. It's sort of nice to see. Let's see if we can get us a little bit more tipped. Here, there we go. There's four and, oh, 10 degrees. And you can see here, it'll warn you as it gets even steeper that we had a little red bars there at 10 degrees. So that's really useful. I do wish I had all of that data, but at least this is, uh, this is sort of the priority data. It's good. Okay, so we've got a trailer hooked up. Thanks, Stacy. You know, who needs a trailer when you've got a friend with a trailer? <laughs> and uh, Stacy's here helping out with the camera as well, but wanted to show you a little bit about this drive mode with the trailer hooked on it. So here we are on off on on road, um, and we can also go over to this trailers tab. Towing does not exist as a driving mode anymore, but this trailers tab exists in all almost all of the drive modes. Sorry, rally and drift mode. You can't pull a trailer in those modes. But here you get information. We've already driven the trailer for a little bit, and it, it's already estimated that tra trailer weight is 5,000 pounds, which we think is actually pretty accurate. And, uh, and it has reduced the range, uh, estimated range to 95 miles. So it was at about 158. And once it got the measurement of the trailer weight, it immediately uh, adjusted my expected range down to 95 per 95 miles, which I think is pretty accurate. I, I feel like having the experience that, that that's pretty good. And of course, 
we can do one thing that I've been wanting to do for a long time, which is I can now look out the truck bed view and see the trailer itself. I can see that my camera's still up there, <laughs> nice and solid. That's amazing. I can also switch the cameras to look at the camera that's right over the license plate and see the actual hitch, which is cool. And I can see out the front as well. Um, but having these two views, the over the bed camera and the camera right over the hitch, it's really useful. So this particular view is really nice to get all the information that you need. I think generally all around, it makes the towing experience really nice. As we know, uh, towing is really tough with EVs. It, it hurts the range quite a bit. So it's great to have this software update where we get more information. It doesn't fix the range issue, but it certainly gives us more information, which gives me more confidence when I'm driving with a trailer. <laughs> All right, so what's my assessment? After using the this new software update in both the R1T and the R1S for uh, several days now, uh, I, I give it a big thumbs up. It's really good data. It's nice to see Rivian surfacing some of this data to the drivers. Uh, just note one thing, the over-the-bed camera is the only feature that's available in the truck that's not available in the R1S for obvious reasons. Um, but everything else is the same between both vehicles as far as the software uh, that, I can, that I can see. There are a couple things that I would like to see in future updates. Um, first of all, this uh, over-the-bed camera feature, which is an amazing feature um, and something I've been hoping for for a long time, it's only available if you toggle over to the camera and back to the data view. It seems like it's uh, there's enough real estate. I would love to see that at the same uh, on the same view, especially if you're towing a trailer and you want to be able to just have in the corner of your eye the trailer in case something you know something moves or something like that. You'd be able to to see it rather than constantly watching it on the camera. So that's something that I would like to see. Secondly, there are a couple of pieces of information that are available only in the off-road view or only in the on-road view, such as the pitch and roll in the off-road and the uh, battery temperature and the trip meter in the on-road. I would like to see those in both places. I mean, there's an argument for you know needing to see each of those things. Like, say you're going up a steep hill with a trailer and you're an on-road, you want to see you know what the what the pitch is or what the roll is, um, and vice versa. You'd want to see the temperature and the trip meter when you're off-road as well. So it'd be nice to see those uh, those data in both places. Um, but otherwise, I think this is an excellent software update. I love to see the progress that Rivian is making here. Looking forward to a lot more things. Also want to give a big shout out, thank you to Rivian, to uh, Rachel, Ian, and Carl for uh, for bringing the truck up. Uh, also to Kyle and Andre for, for their feedback. And a special thank you to Stacy and Ryan for their help putting this video together. And uh, thanks to you for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think, what are some of the features that you feel like need to happen in the next software update. I know I have a long list, but thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.